How's it going out there, YouTube? My name is Jesse, and I am the curator for the Golden Age, and this is another... Lost Heroes of the Golden Age. Yes, we are doing Lost Heroes of the Golden Age, and this time we are doing... How in the world did you find this guy? You mean, why did I choose Flyman? The concept for this character is extremely stupid. Okay, look, in my defense... You have no defense for choosing him. <laughs> anyways... I was actually researching a different hero when I stumbled upon this guy. How many times have you actually done that now? It's probably closer to half than you might think. Anyways, um, I thought this was something different when I saw the first couple of pages and realized that this was really sick. I don't want to say it was stupid, but I'm con a little confused. I mean, there, there's a lot of discrepancy in this comic. And I wanted to just get through it. It's, it's two stories, not very long. And I go into a little bit of a tangent in both of the stories, but... I think the tangents are justified. You'll see why I get a little bit heated about this. Probably more than I should. It's a comic book from 1941. Anyways, we're doing Flyman. And I would say I'm more confused than anything else. So let's go over both stories and then you can tell me if you're as confused as I am. Let's get this one started. Flyman. Flyman, Chip Foster, first appeared in Spitfire Comics number one in 1941. The publisher is Harvey, and he was created by Sam Glansman. I, I think that's Glansman. Um, I'm seriously confused by the construct of this comic book. Um, there's very little explained. I, I, I'm so confused by this thing. This guy gets shrunken down by a machine, and when he puts on this suit, he suddenly has super speed and super power. You know what? There are two issues. They're not very long. I'm going to read both of them, and you can tell me if you're as confused as I am by what's going on. Is this obscure? Definitely. Is this really, really just uh, the construction of this makes no sense. Let's go ahead and go into both of them. And then, yeah, not much of a workup with two stories. You'll see what I mean. Flyman. And it appears that he's standing on flypaper, which doesn't do anything for this. So right over here, it says Sam Glanz, G-L-A-N-Z. Doesn't even have his whole name there. Our story begins where a young lad from the hills of Kentucky is fighting for the heavyweight crown in the... Is that supposed to be Madison? It says Madison. That's an N. It says the Madison Square Garden. That It's the Madison Square. How do you make that mistake? It's Madison Square Garden. His name is Chip Foster. Great fight, folks. This young lad is standing up beautifully under a terrific beating. Foster, I mean. And there's the bell. End of the fifth. How do you print this when it says Madison Square Garden? Where was the quality control on this comic? Anyways, um, his manager comes up to him while fighting, which I don't think really happens very often in a boxing match. There's two grand in it for you if you throw this fight, okay? Two grand extra, kid. Don't forget. Hold on a minute. Okay, I just did the quick math. Uh, basically, that's the equivalent of about $48,000 in today's money. So that, that would have been quite significant. Um, I'm not throwing this fight for anybody. Wow, what a sock! This kid just landed right into the champ's head. Uh, the champ is down. 
for a, for the count of ten, and this guy becomes a new heavyweight champion of the of the world. I mean, what was this? Was this of the world? Maybe not the world, but that's it says look for the crown. Now he immediately goes and sees his father, and they go to the laboratory. Shouldn't you be on a press junket? You just won the the heavyweight championship. Shouldn't you be like in front of the press and giving a press conference talking about your victory? I don't know. Hello, Dad. I saw you outside rooting for me out the window. Billy wanted me to throw the fight. I won't throw the fight away for anybody. And, and this is weird. Um, in, in comic books, if you've got smaller panels connected to the big panel, all these four small panels should lead to the big panel. But what you do is you have the two small top ones leading into the big one, and then the two under it to continue the story down below. Uh, I, I had to reread this page. I actually got confused while reading it. All right, Dad, I'm ready. Let's go. And he talks about how the um, this ray will affect your pupitary glands. They control the growth of the skeleton. Pituitary gland controls the growth of the skeleton. That 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 can't be right. Okay, I just did a quick check, and this isn't completely unnecessary. The Pituitary gland can control growth hormones, including the skeleton. So, there's some scientific basis for what he's talking about here. Um, he says the experiment isn't dangerous, but he hasn't found the antidote to make him proper size again. Uh, since you are become, yeah, world champion boxer, you probably changed your mind. Not by a long shot. I'm still your man. So... This kid just won the World Heavyweight Championship of the world. He's probably a world-famous boxer. And he decides to undergo this experiment with a shrinking machine. Isn't anybody going to wonder where he's gone? The, the father said that he doesn't have a way to bring him back to normal size. Aren't people going to get suspicious that the champ has suddenly disappeared? Okay, Dr. Foster dons on the face protector and Clip steps into the black ray. Wait, did, did he fire up the machine before you even got in there? Okay, so he goes into the rays and he actually gets shrunk. At the same time, Chip's manager Billy walks in. I'm Billy Bank, Chip's manager. Yeah, he told me about the experiment. And I want you to make my two pals small, see? Why Why would you tell your manager about your father's experiment? I mean, he's obviously a crooked manager trying to get him to throw the fight, but why would you tell him about it? I mean, you gotta know he's crooked. Anyways. Um, he, he puts the two associates of Billy under the ray, and they shrink... And, let's see, as soon as the antitoxin in these tubes work on their bodies, we can take them out, it will only take a few minutes. And while he's finishing up on his friends, he notices that Chip is in the glass container. Ah, you wouldn't throw the fight, you rat. So... I'm guessing the reason that Billy is so mad is he must have put a large amount of money on the champ. And since Chip didn't throw the fight, Billy lost that money. So he takes the container and throws it across the room and it lands in a vat of acid. Chip shrieks with agony, then sinks to the floor unconscious. Now the father, not liking this, suddenly darts at Billy but then gets shot for his trouble so he falls dead. Uh, the murder carry or the murderer carrying his now small companion escapes from the scene of the crime. Now let's get to work, boys. So let's see. He's starting to tell the pan later at the quick side out. These murderers will pay with their lives. Meanwhile, Chip has gained his senses, and we find out that Billy has broken into a museum. 
And he has... Okay, he surprises the Night Watchman. Okay, so he apparently has the Night Watchman show him to the jewelry room, and we have no idea what happens to the Night Watchman after that. Meanwhile, back to Chip. Dad wanted me to fight crime in this costume. Billy is the first on my list. The fly, man. Okay, your father never said anything about you fighting crime. We don't know anything about the suit. We don't know anything about what's going on. It would have been nice if the father had given an ex an exhibition dump ex exposition dump about you becoming a crime fighter. Then this mean would this, this this scene would make sense. It seems like you're just doing this out of petty revenge. Okay, so as the fly man, he flies, he f flashes out the lab. Okay, doesn't say he flies, he flashes out the laboratory window. You know, for a guy called Flyman, you do a remarkably small amount of flying. Is is it more of a reference to your size? Okay, so we cut back to Billy, and he's at the jewel room, and the two small guys get through the lock, and they seem to. I'm calling camp on this. That diamond is bigger than the lock that they just went through. There's no way that diamond is fitting through that lock. I mean, he obviously put the diamond through to Billy because, you know, look at the size of the hands and the diamond. But there's no way that diamond fits through that lock. I'm calling total camp on this scene. And, and yeah, I know, a lot of things in the 1940s didn't make sense. But come on, th just about sizes. Okay. So, while he's holding the diamond, this little miniature man, and his size seems to vary sometimes, and especially in the next issue, comes in and throws the diamond out of the hand, and, oh, there's the arrow. <laughs> yep. I actually didn't need the arrow this time. I, I could tell... No, wait a minute. Let's see. Um, how in the hell did you fly through the door? Nothing about your origin or your story says that you have super strength, yet you flew through a thick... It even says it. The Flyman crashes through the thick door. How did you manage to do that? Okay. So he starts shooting at Flyman. I love the way he dodged this bullet. Zing! Uh, so, he, I'll get you, little punk, just what I wanted you to do, Billy. And he takes out the silken core. It says, a silken core wraps around Billy's wrist. Um, how did you make the cord wrap around his wrist? Did, did you have something attached to it that makes it wrap? I mean, I see we see you making a lasso, but you didn't say you lassoed his wrist. You said it wrapped around his wrist. There's a big difference. Okay. And somehow, this guy, probably two inches tall, pulls this full-grown man's arm through the door so hard that this full-grown man, it's got to be at least 5'7", five, 5'8", five, crashes into the door. The size comparison, the size comparison, and the amount of strength that you're using doesn't make any sense. And before it looked like you were barely the size of your hand. Now, when you look a little bit bigger, okay. So he somehow finds the amount of strength to crash Billy right into the door. Billy smacks against the hardwood door with a resounding thud, then sinks to the floor unconscious. There's nothing to indicate that you have super strength at all. Okay, so he starts to fight the, the two little shrunken men. And this one guy climbs up the suit of armor. And this whole page, this whole, this whole sequence of this page with these three panels is confusing. So Flyman seems to be on the ground. One of his buddies is on the ground and he says, just wait till that shrimp comes up here. I'll knock him right over the side. Um, that doesn't make any sense. 
if he climbed after you, he would be behind you, and you're facing the wrong way if he's going to come behind you, evident by the fact that in the very next panel, Flyman is pushing him off the suit of armor. But the Flyman surprises the thief with a quick movement, tosses him to his death. So he's not afraid of killing somebody. And this action scene right here, even though he goes out of the panel, does look pretty good when he throws the knife. This one is for my father. Billy killed your father, not the shrunken man. So, I mean, that's a big knife that goes through the small guy, but th that guy didn't kill your father. Billy did, and you just left him unconscious. Oh, he throws a knife and he kills the other guy. The police will finish here soon and or the police will be here soon and finish this job. Now I will go into the world and devote my life to fighting crime. Watch for Flyman in the next issue. Okay, now this next story gets really weird. Um, Flyman is on the cover, but he is not the featured story. It's still Spitfire here the comic is named 100 pages there's only 99 pages in this one anyways um it says the fly man we've seen sam glands again doesn't pull his full name I, I think there was there was some reason in the golden age that you wouldn't put your full name or you'd be under a pen name but okay anyways so we see this opening splash scene where this guy is shooting at a piece of machinery and there's money everywhere and there's fly man flying. Our story begins in a small grocery store where two men are passing off counterfeit bills. What you think this is, huh? No more phony bill, phony F-O-N-N-Y bills. So the store owner doesn't want to accept any more phony bills and they shoot him. Uh, I said stay back. So you shot him and then you punched him. D wait, did you shoot him? I mean, maybe you didn't. Maybe you just pulled out the gun. It looks like you were shooting him. That's what the... The way the guy is moving, he looks like he got shot. Anyways, he gets punched, thrown, in the co uh, thrown into the can, says don't call the cops, and they speed off. And Flyman just happens to be in the area where all this is going on. With a sudden burst of speed, Flyman is close behind the fast-moving automobile. When did we establish that you have super speed? We, we really didn't even establish that you have super strength. Now you have super speed. You got the vehicle as it's fleeing. Flyman quickly overtakes the speeding auto, but the exhaust blinds him and causes him to stumble into the path of another auto. The Flyman nimbly spins over the over to escape the gigantic wheels. How are you moving so fast? Are you are you able to fly faster than the car can drive? I, I don't even know how you fly. You're just in a suit. You haven't even indicated that you have a means of propulsion that allows you to fly. Okay, so he's, he moves out of the way of the car and he finds himself in the sewer and while well, submerged in the sewer water, wow, things are sure happening fast. Well, I don't know how you were managing to say that underwater and now you have your mouth full of sewage. So that was really smart. Okay, now to get out of this rat hole and they actually show him soaking wet, which, good job. There's a lot of times when people jump out of the water in comic books and you can't tell that they're wet at all. So, he comes out of the sewer grate and he says, one of the counterfeiters. How did you identify him so fast and why is he no longer in the car? Okay, so the fly man grabs the gangster's heel and flips him. Again, with the super strength that you showed us that you, had no indi that you didn't have. You suddenly have super strength. Um, over on his back, then slips the noose over his neck. Right. Now talk, or I'll pull this this noose around your neck tighter. Don't. I'm choking. No, what? Yeah, I'm choking. Down on the pier. Off. Oh, 27. There's. Now, the, the blue sedan comes over and... 
the light snorts out of the Tommy appears out, or a light snout of the Tommy appears out of one window. That rat. Now, in the and in, in previously we see that fly man is on top of this guy choking him, but in the next panel when the truck shows up, they shoot him, and the guy doubles over and falls to the ground. Flyman was already on top of this guy, choking the life out of him. How is he falling to the ground when he was already on the ground? You, you, you see him. He is falling down to the pavement. The gangster opened fires with the deadly fire bullets. Won't talk anymore. So suddenly, Flyman is no longer on top of him, and there's no longer anything wrapped around this guy's neck. Okay, as the speeding auto passes, Flyman leaps for the door handle. I, I can't even begin to explain how this is happening. No more beer bumpers for me. You technically weren't even on the rear bumper before. You got the exhaust blinding you in the face. Okay. So, he hangs onto the car until he gets into the hideout. The car stops on the waterfront and the two killers step out. Then, they take a rowboat and head for the old tug. So that's the hideout, huh? Now, I'm a little confused by this. Now, how am I going to get over there? Well, first of all, why didn't you jump on the life raft when they took it over to the ship? Number two, can't you fly? You showed us indications that you can fly. You're called Fly Man. Can't you fly over to the boat? And then, he decides that he's going to ride a seagull. The frightened gull soars high into the air with the men, with the fly man clinging to his foot. You are awfully lucky that the gull flew towards the ship. He could have flown more inland. Uh, that, and that probably would have made more sense for him to grow, fly inland. There's no, there is no point for this bird to fly close to that ship, especially with something clinging to him. So, he happens to make it over to the ship, and I don't even think he lands on the deck. We see him falling, and then he falls to the open hole, where these guys are apparently doing their uh, counterfeit thing. Flyman drops into the midst of the counterfeiters. One of the men sees Flyman and opens up with a salvo of bullets. Hey, there's a little tiny man, so I'm going to go ahead and shoot him. The guy is small. You you could have easily have missed him and shot the people. He, he really does miss them. You see the, the, the chunks of wall flying behind him. But the fly man dashes forward, unraveling one end of his rope. The, the rope that... Okay, now this time it looks like there might be a, a weighted object on the end of this rope. It, it, we didn't see one in the last issue, but this time... There seems to be a weight on it. So they have a little bit of explanation to how it's able to wrap around someone. Almost upon or almost upon the gangster, the fly man lashes out with the whip like rope. So there does seem to be a, a weight and it explains how it wrapped around this guy's wrist. But he somehow yanks this guy so hard that he drops the Tommy gun. Flyman then hops upon the press and destroys the plate. How? How did you destroy the plate? Um, the plate is what they use to stamp the bills. Full-grown people, full-grown people like, like my size, would have trouble destroying a printing plate. How did a man that's probably two inches tall do this? There's no indication that you have super strength. You never once listed it. Oh, I'm a boxer. Suddenly, I'm super strong. That has nothing to do with it. Just because you can throw a punch doesn't mean that you can lift a lot of weight. I understand boxers are a bit more conditioned than a normal person. But shrinking yourself down also reduces the amount of strength that you have because... There's less of your body to exert the force that you need. So being shrunken like this, you should not have super strength. And this isn't like Ant-Man in the MCU movie where you reduce the space between your atoms to make you small, which was 
that that was re that was ridiculous. Anyways, but we're not talking about that. So he also destroys. Or he upsets a basket of bills as the gangsters close in. Flyman drops behind the fallen crook, goes into his pockets, and appears with several coins. Did you just happen to know the coins were in there? Okay. So he takes out a coin and wraps his his whip around the coin and turns it into a sling and slings a quarter so hard that it knocks out the sea captain. I'm... Hold on, let me go grab a quarter real quick. Okay, I am holding a quarter in my hand right now and I cannot for the life of me conceive of a scenario where the quarter could be swung hard enough to be able to knock somebody out. I mean, this thing would have to be shot out of a cannon to, to I, I mean, to even begin to have the kind, or like, drop from terminal velocity. And I still don't think that the quarter would move hard enough to be able to knock somebody out. I mean, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I can't even begin to conceive of a scenario where something like this would even be possible. Even in a sling. It's a quarter. This thing is so light. Okay, I tried to look this up and Google told me to stop asking stupid questions. So... Um, he, oh, he knocks the captain out with a coin. Almost at the same instant, the two remaining crooks are knocked over. Um, I think he knocked them out with coins too, which makes, anyways, uh, the first sailor with the broken wrist rises to his knees and takes aims at Flyman. So Flyman takes the bullet out of the gun and throws it at the guy who shot at him earlier. And I'm going to read this. But the Flyman, ever alert, ducks in doing so. His hand lands on the fallen pistol. Taking out a bullet, the Flyman whips it with terrific force at the gunman's head. Now to notify the police. That's how it ends. Are you as confused as I am? That is Flyman. Nothing more, nothing less. <sighs> I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that my outrage didn't turn you off too much. That there was a reason, though. I mean, seriously. He, he knocked out somebody with a quarter. I can't even conceive how something like that is even possible. Anyways, I, I hope you enjoyed this. I, I want to get to the hero I was originally planning on doing. As much as we want to use that word when I stumbled upon this guy. So, until next time, I'll be seeing you.